Hello, I'm Steve Cotter from IKFF. Today's lesson is on back bridging. It's a very important exercise, uh, extremely beneficial for overall flexibility, spinal health, and very important for kettlebell lifters or any type of uh, weightlifting athlete. In kettlebells, for example, when you have two kettlebells on the chest in the rack position, such as in the clean and the clean and jerk, it's uh, very important to develop the bridge so that you can evenly distribute the load throughout the entire spinal column. If you do not have the spinal flexibility, you're going to put a lot of stress in the lower back and that could create uh, complications and even cause injury over time. So the bridge is a really important thing to add into your repertoire. In this lesson, I'm going to take you from the very beginning up to an intermediate level. There are more advanced progressions from that point, but the purpose of this video is to get you started and to bring you at least for the next several months of training. So what you're going to do is lay on your back and it's very important when you bridge to understand that a bridge is a semicircle. And so what you don't want is, is for the spine to hinge like a door. Uh, that's going to be very damaging to the vertebrae. It's not designed to move that way. Instead, you want to spread the load out evenly over the whole space or over the whole length of the spine. So as you're lifting, you don't push straight up as if you're folding in half. Rather, think of pushing your legs against the ground as if you're doing a leg press. So as you're pushing the legs against the ground, your hips, or you can say your belly button, is moving up and back as if you're pushing your upper body away from the floor. So... It's a good idea before you do the bridge to do at least a few minutes of warm up, uh, maybe three to five minutes of some type of cardiovascular aerobic warm up. It could be jogging, it could be doing some body weight squats, skipping rope, anything like that. You want to lay with your feet hip distance apart. So you can just put your hands on the outside of your hips and your heels are going to come right against the hand. So that's going to be hip distance apart. From here, you will press into the ground, inhale, lift, lift your hips up and back, and as you do, interlace your fingers under your back and pinch your shoulders together. As you're pushing, again, it's not straight up, it's up and back, and think of lifting your tailbone up, but also pushing your tailbone forward, as if you're pushing your tailbone towards the back of your knees. And you'll take a few breaths here, never holding the breath. And then you're going to release. And as you release, bring your feet a little wider apart and let the knees collapse inward. That's going to let you completely relax. Let the hip flexors relax. Take a few recovery breaths. And I recommend you do this at least three times, maybe five times. So again, hip distance apart, interlace your fingers under your back, under your hips, pinch your shoulders together, inhale, you're going to lift the hips up and back while you're pushing your tailbone forward. There shouldn't be any pressure on your neck, so you're also lifting your chest up and back. And then you release, bring the feet apart. Let the knees collapse inward and relax. So do that at least three times. And then you're going to move into what I call phase two. So that was phase one. Phase two is going to be the same setup. However, from here, you're going to bring the hands over the head and then bring them back down so that the hands are on each side of the head. Your fingers are pointing towards your feet. You want your elbows pointing up, so don't let the elbows flare. Rather, pinch the arms together so the elbows are pointing straight up. As you inhale and lift the hips, 
you're going to put the top of your head on the floor and now use your head as a wedge and again lift your hips and belly button up and back pressing into the ground with the head hands and feet a few breaths in that position exhale down bring the feet apart and bring the knees together so again you'll do that at least three times and that may keep you busy maybe for the first few weeks and then when you feel ready and confident with that second phase you'll move into the third phase which is what I call intermediate same setup you're gonna pull your feet in as close as you can hip distance apart <clears throat> You bring your hands over the head and again, position your hands on each side of the head. Squeeze your arms into your head, elbows pointing up. Inhale, raise your hips, come up onto the ball, the, come up onto the top of your head. Now, as you exhale, you're gonna push your hands and your feet into the ground, lifting your navel up and back. Your first goal is to straighten your arms here. So you're gonna push and straighten the arms. Breathe here. From here, once you're able to straighten your arms, you can work on straightening your legs. And slowly release down. And again, bring the knees in towards each other to completely relax. So those are gonna be your first three phases, phase one, two, and three. And again, do a thorough warm up. take your time, don't rush to the next phase until you feel confident with the current phase. So work on phase one as long as you need to. When you feel confident, go to phase two on top of your head. From there, when you feel confident, Go to phase three where you're extending your arms. Once you extend the arms, you can begin extending the legs. That's gonna bring you into the intermediate level of the, of the back bridge. Uh, very beneficial for you. You can do it daily. Just make sure you're warm. Don't use too much force to push. Develop your skill over time. So anything worth doing is worth doing well. Give it a try. Uh, let me know how it goes. Post your comments below. Any questions, give me your feedback. That's going to help you. See you next time.